In this week's On My Shelf, I'm exploring the writing of Jonathan Oxier, the humor of Irma Bombeck, a new young adult book I've started writing, and Star Wars Episode 7. When I find an author whose writing I enjoy, I tend to read everything they write. Fiction, nonfiction, journals, essays, whatever. I like to know who they are and what they're interested in. That's what I've been doing with Jonathan Oxier. In episode 10, I talked about The Night Gardener, which is the first book of Oxier's that I read. It captivated me immediately. I recently finished Peter Nimble and His Fantastic Eyes, which is actually Oxier's first book. It was a story about Peter Nimble, who is a blind thief. One day, Peter steals a treasure box from a traveling man, but when he opens the box, he finds in it not treasure, but three sets of eyes. When he puts one pair of eyes in, he is magically transported to another place and time. This sends Peter on a grand adventure to save a cry for help that came to him in a bottle. This book was just as fantastically written as The Night Gardener. The characters came alive off the page, and the story was fast-paced and, at times, poetically told, which is hard to do well in an adventure story. Peter was a lovable character, as was his sidekick, a knight who was years ago turned into a combination of a cat and a horse. And the story is one I can't wait to read to my boys. I was pleasantly surprised to read that Oxier has another Peter Nimble adventure set to release in April. It will definitely be on my shelf. For a while now, I've been studying the art of humor writing because I run a humor parenting blog called Crash Test Parents. A couple of years ago, I discovered the classic humor that is Irma Bombeck. I love this woman. She used to write a syndicated newspaper column in American newspapers, and many of her columns have been turned into book collections. She's also written a few standalone books. One of my favorites is Family, The Ties That Bind and Gag. But the one I most recently finished is When You Look Like Your Passport Photo, It's Time to Go Home. I laughed out loud in so many places. This is a book about traveling, alone, or with a spouse, or with children. She has such a way of turning a phrase that sticks with a person long after they've closed her books. If one wanted to begin studying the art of humor writing, Irma Bombeck would be a good place to start. Our family has begun the new year with two family fun days and loads of time spent playing. We are exploring how to regard everything in our lives as play even work, even cooking meals, even chores. The other night, when the kids wanted to turn up the volume on a Kids Bop CD during dinner, we suggested they wait until chores. And then we danced through sweeping the floor and wiping off the table and washing the dishes. These kids can bust a move, and they definitely didn't get it from me. This week, I started on a lot of final draft manuscripts, including Farrandale, my brother Oliver, and I continued with The Midnight Hour. I also started working on a brand new story that is so new it doesn't even have a title. It's going to be a book sort of like The Perks of Being a Wallflower meets Eleanor and Park. I'm really excited about this one, even though I didn't start out planning to write in the young adult genre. But this one takes place in the late 90s, and I started listening to a 90s Pandora station. There's just nothing like this music. I might have to start setting all my novels in the 90s, just to listen to that station. Anyway, I have a pretty aggressive writing schedule planned for this year, and this week was a great week toward meeting my goals. During the Christmas break, my husband and I went to see the new Star Wars movie. Don't worry, I'm not going to give away any spoilers. I'm just going to say that I enjoyed it just as much as I thought I would, probably more. I'm not a hardcore Star Wars fan, but I do admire George Lucas for his brilliant storytelling and world building. I was disappointed, though, to see that the screenplay was not actually written by George Lucas. I say disappointed, but maybe it's more surprise. I don't know if I, as a writer, could let go of a world like that, but I suppose at a certain point you have to move on. Maybe the Star Wars story for him was over. He was content to let someone else continue it. I just don't know if I could do the same, but good for you, George Lucas. For more about me or my books, sign up for my email newsletter, 
where I share an inside look at life and projects I'm working on and the current novel of the year. If you have any questions about writing or books or how I managed to run a writing career with six little ones, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them in future episodes. For more on my shelf, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.